What is your name and where are you guys from? My name is Kareem. I went to high school in the UK. Dianis. I was born and raised in London. I'm Arnav. From Bangalore, India. I'm Simon. I'm from Hong Kong. Axel. I'm from the Philippines. Ed. I'm also from the Philippines. My name's Stanley. I was born here, but I grew up overseas in Estonia. Bree. And I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. Why did you choose to study in America? I think America is the place where top university are gathered. It's way more of an experience as opposed to just a degree. The education system seemed a lot more interesting and a lot more flexible. There are more specialized fields in America to go and like biotechnology, biochemistry. What were your initial thoughts of like studying in America before you came? If you like watch like I don't know, like Legally Blonde in the start, you're like expecting like those like really large like frat houses and sorority houses and stuff. Whereas here, that's not a thing at all. Like, I thought it was very clicky, big friend groups that you couldn't join. That, that obviously that's not true. I also thought oh, people would always be dressing up and wearing the latest shoes, and some people do, but like it's not that serious. In China, people usually form the U.S. as a place of danger and risk. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you may get shot, you may get stabbed. It's not as dangerous as the stereotype frame. The campus are very safe. What challenges did you face your first few weeks here, if any, like acclimating to America? Coming here, I remember the first lunchtime rush, 12 o'clock rush. I got a panic attack because there's so many people on BC Plaza, so many people I did not know. In Jamaica, you're bound to see someone you know, I promise you. I think definitely like getting set up with like some of like the basic stuff, like your like bank accounts and phone numbers is obviously like an initial hurdle. I get exhausted interacting with Americans not because they're like not not because I'm too tired it's because it, English is my, my first language and it's exhausting to speak English 24-7 a lot of it I think this has to do with when you're so far away from family that you kind of lack a certain kind of support and you have to find that support system through other means in my case it was very much my team my coaches as well as a lot of my friends around Duke have you had any like culture shocks coming here Small talk. Oh, that was mine. Okay. <laughs> People are really fast when they come up with like witty things to say. It's either I want to have long conversations with them or not have a conversation at all. It's like awkward when I talk to people like, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? It's like, oh, we're getting away now. Okay, fine. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Holding the door open was a bit shocking. Really? Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Like, I think like in America, like people hold the door open for you when they like see there's someone coming behind them. Yeah. I was walking at my own pace and someone held the door open and I had to like run. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Tapes culture. Coffee is like six bucks. I also need to pay like two or three more dollars and some tips that goes to just add up the price. Probably the culture of political correctness. I would say that like on a day-to-day -day basis, I just had to put more thought into the way I like articulate myself yeah. here as opposed yeah. to there. I, I would agree to that. And to add on, in general, I feel like coming from the UK, there's more like banter with what you can say. Whilst here, Cream says like, you have to think a bit more before you say something. I never really got this before I was in the US, but it's like, I'm from California, I'm from New York, I'm from Texas, yeah. like I'm from these different places. Where people are from, or at least in the US, are very strong identities. Have you had any difficulty making friends uh, when you first came here? I don't think so. I think number like the international community, number one, is like very strong. Apart from that, I think that like because of the internet and stuff, I think everyone is like more like homogenous these days. People are very friendly here, so as long as you want to make friends, you can make friends. I mean, people here at Duke are very welcoming and when I see I'm from Jamaica, a lot of people are like, whoa, what? You know, a lot of interest in hearing about it. Have you experienced any homesickness? Sometimes. I think the main thing is like culinary homesickness. I really miss the food back home. Jamaican food is very much different from American food because it's season. Also, I'm a very family-oriented person. I talk to my mom a lot and I talk to my dad a lot and even when I talk to them a lot, I still miss them. For me in the first year, not so much because I really wanted to be out of the Philippines because that was during COVID. I think my second year, it felt a bit more like, okay, the honeymoon period is over and now I kind of miss my family and miss my friends. What have you found to be like the most helpful maybe international resources, if any, here? Well, I will be president of Students of the Caribbean Association. That has helped me a lot because in Soka, we're always one ordering Caribbean food. And we always have these Caribbean events like the Caribbean party, which provides a sense of home for me. Have you been able to maintain a connection with your family and uh, people from back home? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think like I, I obviously like see them during like the, like the long breaks. 
so I definitely think that like, it's like nice to catch up but I definitely like keep t in touch with like family on like video call and like on my birthday like yeah like we zoom sometimes yeah. just the internet is connected everywhere I just need to do a quick FaceTime with them every week or sometimes every day with my friends in the Philippines Facebook is a huge thing so I use Facebook Messenger to chat with them like I call my parents almost every day if I can I use Messenger Facebook but I don't often talk to them that's probably one thing I need to work on that means I'm not like feeling homesick lately so but what do you think are the biggest differences between college in India and college here like the freedom and flexibility there's no like set track you have to follow I took like a, a lot of time in my first year just like exploring courses I would think would like be interesting to me seeing people are really promoting the concept of critical thinking the professor here doesn't give you a concept they like they want you to self-explore while in China you need to follow the rules in London you have to declare exactly what you're doing from the first day you go and you can't change it whilst here I know like we only declared our majors like I think a month ago and we're, we're both sophomores so. how do you see your experience studying in America affecting like your future goal careers and stuff I have good faith and confidence that my American education has made me a more resilient individual a more capable fellow. I think that my Duke education taught me not only factual knowledge, but also a way of thinking that I hadn't had before coming to Duke. And I thought I was going to be a research scientist, so that's why I was choosing subjects like biophysics, chemistry, because that's where the money is. But now that I went to Duke and I'm able to try more subjects, I realized I actually love psychology. So now I'm pursuing a career in law. What advice would you give a younger student looking to study abroad in America? I need some time to <laughs> act and exercise your judgments as if you've already made your decision that you will study abroad here because it does require your full effort and it is something you should have the opportunity to consider. You learn so much. The world is so big. When you put yourself in an uncomfortable position, that's when you learn about yourself. That's when you learn who you truly are and how you function in different spaces. Don't be afraid of the big college campus and the big student population. I'm going to trademark this, I think. Yeah. And I think this for every university where like a week ends and you have this trampoline in front of you and as soon as your first day of classes starts you take a jump and like you're just trying to do one flip but the jump actually lasts four years and as you're in the air trying to complete this flip you're having a ton of stuff thrown at you. You're having social drama, oh. meeting new people, you're having issues with your classes, you're getting over those issues. You're just overcoming a bunch of obstacles as well as having a lot of fun. And then if you can stick the landing after those four years, it's a lot all at the same time, but I wouldn't have it any other way because I've learned and grown so much as a result.